All right, hello and welcome. Um, we're going to talk today about the system that I have built, which uh, I call the Overkill 1000D. Um, I have some pictures. I think we'll start with the pictures first, then we'll get into the finer details of the system specifications. So uh, to start off, the uh, system is a Corsair 1000D. Uh, as you can see, there are a total of, well, seven radiators. But there's six of the 480 millimeter radiators. There is uh, two thick Hardware Labs radiators in the front. And then there are four thin of the Hardware Labs thin radiators that is mounted on top and also in the rear exterior of the computer case. I managed to be able to hold the exterior radiators together uh, with the combination of parts. So as you can see in this picture, I have a coolant uh, bracket, external radiator bracket that I bought from Newegg. And uh, the really cool thing about the Obsidian 1000D case from Corsair is that there are mounting points on the rear of the case for both a 120 millimeter and also a 140 millimeter. So uh, I thought, well, I could just take advantage of both. And uh, what I ended up doing, I'm just gonna zoom in here, is um, I had a 120 millimeter size for the bracket and I had a 140 millimeter um, radiator that I managed to screw in so basically I'm using all the mounting points here now I did try to fit a 280 millimeter radiator here but I found that it just wouldn't clear and uh, it would also hit the bottom um, yeah it, un unless it would be some serious modification cutting some portions to the top but then I wouldn't be able to fit a fan in there so I ended up just sticking with a uh, 140 millimeter uh, radiator here and it works pretty well um, so what I have this uh, in use is basically as GPU heat exhaust um, the way that the loop is set up I know this looks very confusing but um, the front two radiators are the GPU radiators and also the uh, 140 millimeter radiator is part of that GPU radiator loop. So uh, starting off, the um, the system has four DDC pumps because they are power management controlled. They can be reduced to a very low um, percentage of uh, of power, and it runs very quiet. So there's actually uh, EK X top connected with a fitting and there is a Fantex R220 radiator that is mounted. Now the really cool thing about the Corsair when that's the case is I could actually fit two and it clears beautifully. So there is one loop that is only for the CPU and the CPU is a Intel Core i9-7920X running at 5 gigahertz which gets extremely hot uh, especially during benching. So I allocated uh, four thin radiators for that and I only have it in push. I only have it in push because um, when you have a very thin radiator you don't really need to have um, push-pull and it would be an unnecessary amount of uh, fans. So the top is just um, a thin radiator with push configuration and then there's also the uh, rear external radiator that's also connected to the top. The loop order for the CPU loop is that first um, it starts off by cooling at the top because the uh, temperature inside the case is a lot warmer. So the loop starts off by going into the very top radiators and then it cycles through. Then it goes down, exits, connects to the external radiator where it has cold air and just keep in mind that um, air outside the case is always going to be much colder, maybe by about 5 degrees centigrade or um, around that much. So um, I wanted to have the loop set up this way because I know the heat rises. Not as fast as people would think, but it does rise. And since I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of blowing air upwards because these fans are sucking air upwards, uh, that heat is exhausting up outside of the case so that that made it sense to have a good starting point and then once it goes to the external radiator the temperature gets much colder because obviously the temperature outside of the case 
is going to help. And so once it goes to the second radiator in the external uh, radiator, that's when it shoots straight up into the CPU and it receives the coldest possible temperature. Now keep in mind this is of course ambient temperature, but still um, any kind of temperature outside the case is much better than any temperature inside. Uh, so that was the main reason for doing that. And because it's, it's four pumps, um, it shouldn't be that much of a problem with restrictions. And um, I actually managed to fit this pretty well. I mean, with all of the uh, connections, uh, it, it manages to just pr perform so, so quietly. I can run the fan speed at 800 RPM. Um, the Hardware Labs radiators are designed for 800 to 1000 RPM. And um, of course, for benching, I, I just turn it up to 100%. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the way this, this turned out because I could have mounted it maybe at the bottom and that would have required uh, screwing it down. In this case, it's already screwed onto the front rads. So uh, it, it looks pretty good because there's a side view mirror. So yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the setup. Now let's move into some more. Um, more pictures of the build. Okay, so as for the uh, GPUs, I went with two Galax OC Lab editions. Um, it was hard to get the second one because honestly, they only made a hundred. But uh, I managed to find someone who sold one, and um, luckily, I was able to, um, you know, pay the amount and have it shipped. So luckily, I got um, a second one. Now Galax does have two brands. They have the Galax, which is um, well commonly known in the United States. They also have the KFA2. And the uh, motherboard, I got a really good deal. And a huge, huge thanks to EVGA, by the way, because this motherboard, it it, it does everything you want it to do as far as overclocking. <clears throat> and if you want it to just overclock on its, on its own, it does that too. Um, so let's take a closer look here. Um, I'm running direct die. So the CPU, uh, it is it is it's a bin CPU. It was binned by um, Extreme Overclocker, um, and according to what I've heard from the uh, the seller is that he had 20 of these CPUs. He sold me the the fastest one, basically, which is why I'm able to um, hit the 5 gigahertz. So uh, it has the Bowers Direct Die Frame. Um, the CPU I cleaned it off pretty well, and I also applied. Um, some nail polish, clear nail polish. I applied three coats, waiting 20, 20 minutes in between each coat for it to dry, and that prevented any kind of shorts around the SMDs. Um, the CPU die has uh, liquid liquid metal, and um, I did not do any kind of lapping on the die. <laughs> that might be something like for build toy, but um, I'm not gonna risk uh, you know just grinding through the entire silicon and killing the chip. So yeah, um, it has also four dim slots. So um, I decided, you know, why not just populate those and go high capacity? So it has uh, two of the G Skill uh, Trident C Royal. These are two by 16 gigabyte sticks. It's rated out of the box. It's rated for 4,000 megahertz CL19. Um, I couldn't quite get it to 4,000 megahertz. I, I think one of the uh, RAM sticks just wasn't been high enough because I, I I could know I could see the troubleshooting LED in, in the RAM and um, that indicated that it just wouldn't boot. Whereas the other three they were capable, um, but I wasn't really um, kind of in the mood to like buy another kit, you know, just in the hopes of I could get one more that would run to 4,000 megahertz. Um, X299 Dark can already do very very well at uh, 3,800 megahertz, which is what I was able to clock it at. And also I managed to go uh, two, two CL lower, so I went uh, from CL19 to CL17. I thought that was a pretty good trade-off. The other thing that I, um, I uh, modified is I added um, a Wi-Fi card. So not a lot of people do this on X299 Dark, by the way. But uh, since it is going to be used for gaming, and actually, just recently, um, Sennheiser released the um, Bluetooth headset, which is going to come out soon for about uh, 250 
now it kind of makes sense because um, right now I'm, I'm using just a wired headset but I plan on getting one of those later on so uh, it has an Intel M.2 card which um, you can see it it's installed here right and in this part uh, it also has uh, little connections for antenna. The antenna connectors did not come with the with the Wi-Fi card, um, the M.2 key. -E. Um, I actually have to buy those separately off Amazon, but they did screw into the I/O, and the antennas were secured. So I actually tested this because I tested the Wi-Fi with the antenna. I get very good uh, signal bars, and. Uh, Let's see what else. So, moving on to other parts of the computer. The uh, computer is using a Aqua Computer um, Creos Next uh, Vision with um, Vario adjustment. So, this water block is a nickel top. Underneath, there is a uh, silver base plate, which is sterling silver or 0.925 silver. Now, as far as conductivity, silver is pretty high in terms of conductivity, so I made sure that I had to get um, a very good conductive, thermally conductive uh, material. Um, I've heard that it's actually slightly better than copper, but maybe forged or pure copper could be better. But I, I really wanted to have um, something that would match also the color of the RAM, and uh, this this does that pretty well. Also, the LCD screen it lights up. It is fully be fully configurable through software. You can put temperatures. Uh, you can put uh, the temperatures of your GPUs. It's connected with a USB cable. So that is a, a really really good water block. And I um, I also put liquid metal on the base plate. So the base plate. The really cool thing is that you can you can actually adjust it. So there's Allen keys on the left and top part. So what that allows you to do is you can lower it by 200 micrometers on top of what you already screwed on the uh, CPU water block itself. That lets you get an extremely tight contact surface and it helps with your core temps. I actually tested this using Intel burn test and uh, I was able to go maybe 10, 10C lower and there were um, very little thermal throttling at 5 gigahertz. All right, moving on. Um, I also modified, the, I, I really went crazy. This is probably unnecessary, but I, I really wanted to have an extra, um, VRM fan. Now, of course, people are going to say, well, rip your warranty. <laughs> but honestly, the board, I only got it, I got a Black Friday for $250, which I thought that was a pretty good deal because now the board is uh, twice as much. So a uh, huge tip to anyone out there. If you want to buy a motherboard, do it on Black Friday. You'll save yourself a ton of money. And the um, the fan here is a Noctua fan. Apologies to Noctua, but your fans just simply did not come in black. Uh, that was a huge turn off. So what I ended up doing, even though it probably affected the airflow uh, slightly, was spray paint the entire fan uh, black. And um, now it actually looks pretty good. And also... I had to um, cut out the uh, plastic covers of the BRM so that air could actually penetrate. So you wouldn't kind of notice that um, stock, the VRM would have this uh, dark plate on the bottom. So I had to cut that out. But I still didn't want to lose the identity of the board. So I actually positioned that on top of this fan. Um, now with three fans, there's no, no problem with any temperatures i mean it already didn't have any but this is kind of like overkill <laughs> um as far as uh monoblocks just in case you guys are are not aware uh, there are no monoblocks available for this particular uh motherboard unless you cnc one which i don't have a cnc machine um or even custom job but now nah, i mean i think this is really enough and it, it runs pretty quiet so yeah that's part of the modification that i did Added a third BRM fan. All right, so uh, moving on, um, the GPU, the GPUs, I I did flush them with uh, Blitzkit Part Two. <laughs> so they are very very clean. Uh, it took an entire day to get this process done because it's like a shampoo kind of cleaning solvent. Uh, I had to do both of these, so that's why I had to order the soft tubing. 
Uh, hard tubing will be a thing. It's just not right now. <laughs> um, soft tubing and the fittings are just so so um, effective in terms of cost. Uh, I didn't have to spend a lot, and it got the uh, computer up and running. So that was great. Uh, moving on. So you, the way I um, I managed to flush it was I had to get a jumper. <clears throat> Let me just rotate so you guys can see. All right, I'm gonna zoom in here. So yeah, there's an EVGA 1600 uh, watt power supply T2, which uh, huge thanks to EVGA. Uh, you guys on your Black Friday deals, man, this was like a, a steal. I mean, uh, I got it for a really, really good price. And uh, there's a jumper, a 24 pin jumper. You can see the button right there. I used that to turn the power supply on. So <clears throat> it didn't actually have to be um, connected to the motherboard. Although I did use the motherboard as a mount so that the GPUs would not move around. So I flushed pretty much everything with parts two of the Blitz kit. And um, the radiators also uh, sat in uh, part one and they were rinsed out, of course, you know. So I took care of all the uh, issues with any kind of um, dirt out of the factory and the rads and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let's move on to storage. Storage is uh, pretty important. Um, for storage, I decided to go with uh, two Samsung 970 Pro uh, M.2 NVMEs because there were two slots available. And I could have gone with the Evo, of course, but um, the 970 Pro is much faster than the Evo. Now, um, I would like to think of the Evo being like a submachine gun where it's the 970 Pro. That's your 50 caliber machine gun. <laughs> so it just keeps keeps consistent speeds. And um, game times for loading are just extremely good. Um, I managed to uh, get these on heat sinks, which I'll show you right now. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, for the heat sinks, let's take a look. Uh, let's see where, here you go. So these are aqua computer heat sinks. Uh, cryo and the twos. They actually didn't quite uh, work on the uh, vertical because it, it couldn't. I couldn't see the GPU. <laughs> the heatsink fins actually uh, prevented the uh, graphics cards from clicking, so I had to file those down. Um, you can kind of see it right here in this picture. So um, without any kind of modification to heatsinks, I, I couldn't get all the entire PCIe. Uh, fingers to click which is why uh, modification had to be done to get those to see properly once uh, modification was done then the GPUs clicked all the way and I covered up the excess with some uh, electrical tape because there is a PCH fan and at least some kind of coverage so that the air will be trapped inside and still continue on through the other channels but that was pretty important I didn't want any air to leak out so the temperatures are still uh, pretty good because there's a heat sink, there's air going through the heat sink. That works great. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, this is just a picture of the RAM. So the RAM is trying to see Royal. Um, yeah, it looks great because it has uh, RGB. But I really just got it for the speed because it overclocks very well. And it's Samsung B die. So that's pretty good. You might be uh, looking at this video in the future and you might think, oh, well, Samsung B die is no longer in production. That's true. There's uh, Samsung A die. Uh, at the time of this video being recorded, I'm not sure what the specs. There's no spec sheets for A die, but that's the replacement. Now moving on to the GPUs. Um, this is kind of the fun part. <laughs> so um, out of the box, uh, the Galaxy OC Lab Edition comes with the water block. Uh, they also include thermal pads, and uh, they also include gloves. They also include this EVBot kind of connection for the end. That allows you to do certain things like PLL voltage control. Um, that would be uh, pretty useful for benching like under, under LN2. Now, I don't have any LN2 containers with me right now, so that might be a feature for that might be a feature for the future. Um, moving on to the board. So. Uh, there are jumpers. <clears throat> excuse me. There are jumpers around the uh, the board that can be removed. That I 
believe removes voltage limitations. I haven't tried it yet. I will um, once I uh, replace a few LED uh, lights on the on the um, on the block because I will be doing a mod just for aesthetics. And uh, what I did with the with the GPU, pretty much the same treatment as the CPU. <clears throat> the CP the CPU of course had the nail polish, so I applied nail polish around the GPU die. It was three layers, waiting 20 minutes for it to dry. Then I applied um, the thermal glue conduct knot. Now, in case you guys are wondering what nail polish I used, I <laughs> well, I used the uh, Sally Hansen Top Coat Color Therapy. It is non-conductive because I I can swear to you, my GPUs are just doing just fine. Um, and uh, the way I I managed to know which one to use is because during a Gamers Nexus video, a uh, huge credit goes to Steve Burke. Steve Burke used the exact same nail polish and what I did is I managed to just pause the video <clears throat> zoom in look at the make and model of this particular one and look it up on Amazon so I ordered that one and I kind of already knew that it worked for Steve so it worked for me too. I'm right, moving on so after uh, it dried I applied uh, the um, conduct knot pretty evenly and then I applied um, the thermal pads. Thermal pads took some time and then there's so many uh, screws. Luckily, they include tools for uh, adjusting the screws. <clears throat> so that was that was the GPU. <coughs> Excuse me. So moving on, let's see what else can I show you. Um, let's see. Actually, I think we're kind of done. Wow, that was very fast. <laughs> so. Um, Installed, this is kind of how it looks like. Of course, um, <clears throat> th there is no cables here. There will be custom cables eventually. I don't plan on buying pre-made ones. I plan on actually um, getting spools and cutting and soldering it myself. Uh, that will be probably Q3 2019, but it will happen, of course. So, <clears throat> the uh, w GPU water block is by bits power. Now there are three A pin connectors. As far as the uh, maximum wattage, it can go over 500 watts. I've got a custom BIOS in it. And with that, I think we're ready to go into the specs. So let's get into it. So we're going to go into numbers now. Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. All right, so uh, first off, there is a custom. Uh, BIOS, which I got from Tech Power Up. So I flashed both cards with MB Flash, and uh, both cards are now at maximum 450 watts, default 400 watts, which I know is pretty high, but honestly, for three A pins, that's actually normal. <laughs> um, they these are uh, 2080 Ti's and um, made by Galaxy, of course, because that's Galaxy there. Uh, it has two GPUs, so NVIDIA NVLink is enabled. <clears throat> I managed to get a four slot, which allows uh, 16x, 16x. Core i9 has enough PCIe lanes to do 216x. And I think that's how you really should run these cards, because if you go 8x on these, you're, you're just undercutting the true performance of the card. I mean, why, why are you doing that? So... I decided to go with the motherboard that is uh, HEDT, high-end desktop, and um, yeah, you can actually see here, I uh, have a GPU monitor, it says PCIe link with 16x, 16x, let's take a look at the uh, power monitor, so we can look at some TEPs, just for idle, so where are you, power monitor, let's see, uh, it's one of these, no, it's a tuner, afterburner, Ah, sir, it was just here. Come on, where are you? Where are you, hardware info? Let's check. Do a search. Hardware info. Man, it was just here. Like, okay, let me check again. Is it? 
Oh, that's core temp now. I think it's HW info. Yeah, there it is. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, let's run it. And stacking. Okay, cool. Close. No, I do not want to update. Okay. So let's just take a look at the sensors. So temperature-wise, uh, I am running a very high V-Core, which honestly, I know that's very high. People will kind of cringe. They'll say, you should just run it at 1.35. 5 gigahertz will not boot at 1.35. 4.7 will. But if you want to go higher in frequency, I have to turn up the voltage. And um, I actually didn't manually set this voltage. I've tried many times, and it hasn't worked. Uh, the voltage was automatically set by the motherboard, and the V core is set to auto. So no issues with that. If the CPU degrades, honestly, I'll just I'll just buy another one. <laughs> uh, I think by the time it degrades, we'll have uh, maybe another high-end desktop chip from Intel, which I think there might be a refresh in Q3 or Q4 2019, and there might be a replacement 2020. So we'll see about that. That's honestly the least of my concerns. But anyway, it is, temperature-wise, it's doing pretty well. Uh, idle temps are in this column right here in the current. So there's nothing above 60. It'll probably hit 55. In the in the in the course, you know, but it won't go past 60 at idle. Now during benching, it might go up to 81. It might even go a little higher than that. But because I've set the uh, water block to be as flat as possible without any uh, lapping, it does pretty well in temperatures. Everything else is uh, pretty much set to auto. Uh, mesh is 30. I've tried 33 mesh. And uh, then Windows corrupted itself. So yeah, it's going to stay at 30. And uh, let's see, what else can we show you? OK, as far as overclocking, the really cool thing is that I can set GPU voltage with uh, Galaxy Extreme Tuner. So it can go as high as, say, uh, 1.25 volts, which is pretty high. Um, in gaming, I'll just set it to maybe one point one volts or 1100 uh, millivolts and that's pretty much a good voltage i haven't had any issues with that and uh cpu offset 148 i find is the most stable in most games anything higher than that i don't think you're, honestly it's the gpu's fault i think the game engines themselves just can't handle it <laughs> So I have the uh, mem clock offset at 355. Um, it is not Samsung memory. I think this is micro, uh, the other memory manufacturer, Micron. Yeah, Micron. And uh, anything past 400, you start to get issues. I mean, maybe for benching, it's OK. But for long-term gaming, I keep it at 355. So let's, uh, let's just overclock this real quick. We'll apply a medium overclock. 148 and uh, let's let's see apply so apply okay so that brings us to 2115 uh, megahertz or 2.1 gigahertz if I switch over oh by the way I have applied these settings to both in extreme tuner if I switch over you'll see that it's the same so the uh, frequency is matching so that's great um let's go over to hardware info oh it just hit itself again uh let's see oh did you yeah here it is okay so let's go over to uh gpus okay so you can see right there uh gpu clock 2100 megahertz um gpu memory clock 7355 uh, megahertz and gpu Voltage, 
that. I don't think it's true. <laughs> Maybe it could be the uh, jumpers that I have to remove. Uh, that probably li probably could be limiting it, but it's at 1,100, uh, which is it's fine, honestly. The temperature is is fine. All right, so let's do some tests because I know you guys really want to see what this thing can do with 5 gigahertz with two 2080 Ti's from Galax, right? So um, I am currently downloading a lot of benchmarks. Some are installing. The ones I can show you right now is just Time Spike Stream, and um, I can run that right now. Port Royal, it's installing, so maybe uh, tomorrow for another video. The video is already getting kind of long. I apologize. Let's run Time Spike Stream, and uh, again we're at 2,115 megahertz. It could go higher, but we'll start this as a base test. So let's see, custom run, graphics test one, yes, graphics test two, CPU test, yes. Uh, let's see, looping enabled, no. We'll do 4K. Uh, demo VRAM. I'll just set it to auto. Let's see, CPU instruction set auto. VSync enabled, no. Absolutely not. So no fix, no fix FPS. I wanted to just run uh, with all the FPS without limits. So let's let's just run. So let's see. All right, my first time spy extreme benchmark run. Here we go. Go away, MSI after runner. Don't need you right now. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh no, it's loading, it's loading though. <laughs> oh wow. We're over 100 FPS. And keep in mind, this is a 4K resolution, by the way. We're dropping some frames here. 60 FPS. Looks really great. Alright, we're dropping a lot of frames. We're at 29. Let me see if I could do uh, MSI Afterburner Overlay. Yeah, we can. So there he is. Alright, uh, based off the MSI Afterburner Overlay, I can see that the GPUs are at 35% utilization. We can tell right away that NVLink is working, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see utilization on both. Now that's my, uh, if you look at the top left of the screen, that's my third and fourth row. Temperatures are at 40C, 6 radiators. That's what we're going to get with 6 rads, man. Well, 7 with the, with the mini 140 rad. CPU temps are in the 60s. Cool. That was that was good. I think that was GPU test one. We'll go to GPU test two. Oh no, is that, this is still one. Okay. I kind of wish they should make this into an actual game so you can just wander around. That'd be cool. All 
All right, so temperatures are still 42, 43. Also, by the way, I haven't actually uh, upped the fan speed on the fans. This is just uh, regular gaming mode. So the fans are doing about 800 RPM on all fans. There's about 32 fans total. And they are Corsair ML RGB fans. Maglev. This was pretty silent. But we're still getting 100 FPS. Also, I think that's something I have to invest in in the future is getting one of those BFGD displays because uh, I am using a TV and the TV is limited to 60 hertz. So that's kind of uh, very limiting. But anyway, I just, it was only like $350, so that was pretty good just to get it up and going from Fries Electronics. All right, so we're, we're at 2100 megahertz. <clears throat> uh, CP, GPU temps are 45C. I do not have any kind of air conditioning, by the way. There's no air conditioning here. Just ambient temperature in Southern California. But as far as the graphics, I mean, it looks great. It looks really good. And uh, FPS max is around 110 fps lows is around i would say 30 on some some scenes i think it's going to get a very good score to be honest with you Also, as far as uh, just RAM usage, I'm only using about 12 gigs of RAM out of 64. So it's way, way overkill. All right, this is CPU test. Let's go. Let's see those CPU temps. All right, let me get the overlay up and running. Oh, it's not. I can't show it. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so uh, 12 cores with hyper-threading. Temps are now going up to 60s, high 60s, 70s. But it's not going over 80. So there, there is still no... Oh, wait, I, th I saw 83. So 83 was kind of the max I just saw right now. But it's not going to 90, that's for sure. It's not going to 90, and I have a very, uh, very, very quiet fan speed right now. I'm at 800 RPM. Getting about 9 frames per second just with CPU. You can tell that the GPUs are not doing anything in this scene. I'm seeing the overlay on MSI Afterburner. GPUs are at 1% utilization. So this is all CPU, by the way. So do not think for a second that the Galaxy Hall of Fame cards are giving this performance because it's not. It's all CPU uh, rendered. Even the GPU temps are 36C. So that was entirely CPU. But at 12 cores, 5 gigahertz, that honestly wasn't bad. It was pretty good. It's got four more cores than a 9900K. Admittedly, though, on 9900K, it can go 300 megahertz faster. So, all right, so we got a score of uh, 14,770 for graphics. So that's pretty good. Graphics test one, we did 92.84 FPS, rounding it off, I would say 93. Uh, graphics test two, we got 87.53 FPS, not bad. Uh, CPU score uh, got 5,024 points. Average simulation per frame, 69.7 milliseconds. 
right, let's just show the settings used by the way. Um, it was rendered, this was rendered at 1920 by 1080, really? Because I set it to 4K, that's weird. That, I thought it was 4K there. No, that can't be right. Anyway, uh, GPUs, 228Ti's Ambulink, Intel Core i9-2920X, uh, today's date, cool. I mean, that was cool. So let's see, monitoring. This is the timeline. And uh, let's see, compare results online. I, I want to save this, actually. I want to save this score. I'm going to save it as uh, 3D Mark First Run Time Spy. All right, cool. Saved it. And let's see, compare results online. I think that's the one that tells you how good your build is compared to others. Let's check. Oh, I got to register. All right, well, we'll do that later, I think. Um, yeah, let me just move this over. Okay, so we got a ballot result. Uh, let's see. Where's the one that tells me what my computer is better and stuff? So, salt sea tells. Let's see, ballot results, add to compare. View benchmark run. No, I just want to see if this is better than everyone else in the world. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, ballot result, yeah, Hydra. That's what I'm trying to find. Um, is it add to compare, maybe? So I got a score of 1,100, 440. Okay. Search with same GPU, search similar systems. Uh, I think those are LN2 scores. Anyway, uh, that was a first run, which is not bad. I will register for this later uh, let's see to submit scores hall of fame you need to create a feature mark account so i'm going to pause the, vi uh, the video here and i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, i am still waiting for the rest of these benchmarks to install so we'll do a follow-up video on those and uh give a like if you like the video subscribe uh, there'll be more content in the future um and yeah thanks for watching this video bye